With the balance of Congress at stake on Tuesday, Democrats have seen their momentum wane in recent months. According to election tracker 538, Republicans will likely take control of the House. And this has appeared to be true for some time. It once seemed inevitable that Democrats would win seats in the Senate as controversial candidates had put Republicans' hopes in jeopardy. But with races tightening, 538 sees a dead heat in the Senate, with their simulations showing Republicans winning 55 out of 100 times. Joining us now to discuss is David Pakman, liberal commentator and host of The David Pakman Show. David, welcome. My Thank first, you. My first question for you is, did Democrats peak too soon? How much of this has to do with Republican messaging on the economy? Yeah, I, I think that that's absolutely part of what's going on. I, I do think it's important to start the conversation with Historically, these should be very bad midterms for Democrats. Historically, with very few exceptions, uh, 2002 being one exception, when one party takes the White House in the following midterms, the other party does really well. So the expectation really should have been not what was looking like the most likely outcome in July, but the historical reality, which is Democrats should do terribly. The overturning of Roe v. Wade absolutely bo boosted Democratic chances. The idea, it's almost like you drink the coffee too early in the morning and then it wears off by the time you get to work. Um, the effect, the timing of that Roe v. Wade um, uh, decision seems to have waned in the minds of many voters compared to economic issues. And one of the criticisms I've been making of, of Democrats as someone who's on the left, but I'm not a Democrat, I don't particularly care about political party, um, is that Democrats ignored the uh, rhetoric on the economic issues, assuming that Roe v. Wade would still be the most important issue come November 8th, and it's just not seeming like that's the case. I have noticed that some of the candidates have clearly picked up on that messaging in the last few months. It, it doesn't seem to be making too much of a difference, though. Is, is that true? The, the messaging on the economic issues or on Roe v. Wade? On the economic issues. They're starting to also talk about inflation because they saw it was doing so well for Republicans. Uh, but it, it seems they're a little late to it. It does. It seems like it may be too little too late. And again, the, the most likely single outcome still is that Democrats lose the House but have a good chance at keeping the Senate. And compared to what things looked like in July, uh, it might seem not so good. But historically, that's actually not a terrible outcome. Now, it seemed like there was a time when Republican candidate selection with the likes of Herschel Walker and Dr. Oz would dash their hopes of picking up more seats. What's changing here? Uh, nothing has changed. It's that the bar is so low that it's below the ground for Republican candidates. There, there's a reason that Donald Trump ran as a Republican in 2016, which is the bar was low enough that voters might choose him. Donald Trump never could have won a Democratic primary because there are just different standards. Herschel Walker can barely speak and can't explain his position on any issue coherently. He's an obvious liar. He urged and then paid for two women to have abortions despite claiming to be absolutely against abortion in all cases. And when you talk to the voters, one woman recently, we looked at a clip, she was confronted with that reality and she said, well, we all make mistakes in our youth. Herschel Walker was 50 when he did that with one of those women. So the issue, which is, I guess, a great thing in a way for Republicans is there, there is no low too low. They will explain away any conflict or contradiction. And it's great for people who have no business you know, running an ice cream shop, never mind being senator of the United States like Herschel Walker. It's a great thing for them. So let's say these predictions are correct and the House and the Senate do go to the Republicans. What is this going to do to the Democrats' agenda over the next two years? Well, nothing will get done. Um, it will be just overt obstruction other than on the most you know, benign and banal, uncontroversial issues. And then going into 2024, Republicans will accurately run on Biden didn't get anything done. Of course, it will be because of them, but they will be able to use that in their 2024 campaign. So it will be very good for Republicans. We don't want to put the cart too far before the horse, but what would all that mean for the last two years for President Biden of this term, at least? Well, one of the things that is 
useful to Biden is that historically the economy does much better under democratic presidents. If you look at essentially any indicator, um, stock market growth, job creation, unemployment rate is lower on average under democratic presidents, GDP growth higher, inflation lower. Without even having to deal with Republicans in the House and Senate, if things just kind of revert to their historical averages, there should be a pretty okay economy over the next two years. Of course, there's always predictions of a recession, but we we just don't know right now. If things just sort of regress to the mean, which is the economy does slightly better under Democratic presidents than under Republicans, Democrats should have a case to make to justify further Democratic elections in 2024. But we we just have to wait and see. Okay. David Pakman, thank you very much. Thank you.